Okay, this is William and Veronica Morris, the two of us talking about our situation and uh, coronavirus. And here we are on the 31st of March. And Veronica, what's our daily routine now that we have this? We don't have the virus, but we're no. trying to avoid it, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. And we go walking to... We've got, William's got a little... Um, kind of a meadow, isn't meadow, it? Meadow, yes. And we've got trees in the meadow. And we go down to the meadow, and it's the weather is so cold. It's just every time you get a gust of this really, really east wind, and you take your breath away, it's so cold... And then we go down to the bottom and William starts cutting wood and and I keep on saying, move over to the right, move over, move over and cut at that place and that place. And we do a lot of cutting and William and he slowly walks back up towards me and I'm sitting, as I say, on the stool and doing my exercises, you know, for MS that you do as you're doing them. And um, yes, I do the exercises and we then gather ourselves up and come back. Yeah, with all our logs yes. for the fire. <laughs> yes. This is, I mean, Veronica has multiple sclerosis, as some of you know. But anyway, the the point is the, um, so we do this thing. Why do we do this thing? Because we're in um, isolation. At least we're sort of in lockdown, aren't we? Yeah. We don't. We're not meeting anybody else. Not being that sort of age that we are, so well, we yeah, don't we're meet, meet, meet anybody else. And on top of which, yeah. So, and I'm a cancer survivor, but that is, is I'm very fortunate because I used to have chemo till just just about a couple of weeks ago, exactly. and now they've taken me off the chemo, which makes me less vulnerable to coronavirus. But you. Uh, theoretically, because under MS is an immune system disease, and you're taking immune suppressants, you take a daily mm. injection of what's it called, capexone. Yeah. Mm. So you're more vulnerable. And had it been a week or two ago, I would have been more vulnerable in spades. But mm. I'm very, very lucky now to be off my chemo. Yes. We were just t- telling somebody about this today, and she said it's amazing that you moved out of of London. Yeah. And move to this little cottage where you're sort of free of all that sort of disease. Cope whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, no, we are we, we are very lucky because mm. we're in living Cornwall now. Yeah. And uh well it gives us a garden to walk in. Imagine if you're stuck in a flat in exactly. London and you're under lockdown. And as as a lot of our friends are. I mean, some of them older ladies uh, alone, and I mean, my goodness, it's mm. it's harsh, Very difficult. difficult indeed, because because they they're vulnerable, and what are they going to do? They can't. And I think they're frightened as well. A lot of people are very frightened about catching this disease. Yeah, fear is an issue. Yes, and I think I don't think the BBC have helped because they say every. Every hour or something, the don't know can, virus. This is it's yeah. There's kill. always there's always a new death yeah, toll or absolutely. something. Yeah, um, but I mean, you have to keep people informed yeah. better than not, I suppose. But yes, so the BBC is is doing its bit to keep to foster a climate of fear. But then, um, then the the other thing is a lot of our friends. Well, no, a lot of our friends. One or two, and I'm thinking of one specific particularly when I say it's one of your friends, but I get depressed, don't they, mm. with this? Yeah. It's uh, depressing. But what's our daily routine? So we do we do this. You see, I get up and I do a bit of work. Well, I get up early anyway because I get up about 5 a.m. and have a quiet time of contemplation. Then, then maybe, and write a, do a little writing. About 7 a.m., then I'll go back to, well, bed, perhaps a little before that sometimes and take Veronica a cup of tea. She'll turn the radio on. I'll fall back asleep to about 9 a.m., which has been our routine recently. But this then then I'll do a bit of work when we get up and then have a bath. Gosh, I'm keeping much cleaner. <laughs> I'm bathing every day now, it's a, um, as well as washing my hands more frequently. Well, you should have been bathing every day anyway. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> I'm good as gold now. Uh, squeaky clean. And so what? And so then, then we have you have a little breakfast. I don't yeah. have breakfast. It amazes me in this little cottage. They used to have five children here, 
and well, more than five more than five children in this little two bedroom two up two down two up two down yeah and now we we want water all the time no wonder we're running out of water because everyone's having showers all the time and there's no wonder we're going uh, to run out of water have to go and, g- uh, go and collect water yeah, in I these know. cottages when i was a boy well that's right and from that, and a spring well perhaps uh, they'll have to do that <laughs> we'll be going back to basics yeah it feels like that very often. Now we're cutting our own wood for the fire and so on. Yeah. It feels like going back 40 years and 50 years, more. And, yeah, I quite like it, actually, in some ways. I shouldn't say that, should I? Everybody's suffering, but but it's it's a more basic sort of life. And, yes, yeah, we're not the distraction of going up to London for meetings and mm. going out to meet friends... Even we can't even go out to the cinema. We, I mean, our children are being great. They've bought us BritBox, haven't they? Mm. And or we haven't got it yet, but it's coming with a new television that we can, so we can watch old series of the kind of stuff that please us, detective stuff and so on that we enjoy. What else about our daily routine? In the afternoon, we very often I fall asleep for briefly. <laughs> You phone people endlessly, yeah. don't you? You're phoning mm. more people than ever before because you've got friends you keep in touch with. Yes, I think it's important to keep in yeah. touch with people at yeah. this time because, as I said, it's a very fearful time for some people and because they don't know if they've got a slight um, problem with their breathing and things. It's you know it's really worrying, yeah. and then if you catch this, in fact, a friend of mine's caught it. And she found it very difficult to fling it off. She, well, she's about our age, and, and she'd caught it, and she found it very difficult. It to takes a long time, take, isn't it? To, yeah. to get rid of it. So what, who crosses your mind most often? What new thoughts do you have now or challenges that are different now that we're under this coronavirus thing? I think about the reason, reason that this has happened. And one thinks of why... Has this happened to us? Maybe God saying, you're poisoning the planet. It's a very small planet and you've been poisoning it, poisons onto the earth. And you know, it's only one fragile little earth and the glaciers are melting all over the world. And I think, I think my, was, um, in fact, my brother went to, uh, quite a long time ago and was, went to, to the, the South Pole. And the waves were so huge and immense, and he got quite seasick doing it. But I just think there's too many people hattling about this this planet for their own sake, seeing these wonderful things that are happening, and, and it's really worrying that so much has happened to this planet. Yeah. And I think it's a really dangerous thing to do, and thank goodness we're being brought short and said, now, look at this, this is what you've done. And me, what do I think about more God, I guess? Um, it make, gives me more time to think about God. And I'm very struck by a Muslim philosopher, Mullah Sadra. And he he was he, he basically into why we are here and this kind of thing, these, these basic ideas. So Mullah Sadra says God gave you free will but he didn't just give you free will he gave the entire universe free will took his hand away and i like that idea that that we're not unique that god gave everything from the volcano to the virus free will and why does that matter because otherwise life would have no purpose we'd be living in some perpetual garden of eden and we might be squabbling amongst each other but everything would be perfect all around us that doesn't work we have to have a environment to deal with that is as broken as we are because we have freedom and yes and after all this coronavirus was of our own making so it makes me think about god this thing mm. makes me really reflect me on the nature of god and the purpose of god for mankind well it is very much the meaning of life and at this age you just think what is the meaning of life? You know, why were you put here? What was the purpose? And somebody said to me today, every child was sort of invited to come to Earth. And um, I think there was Nick Parker saying something like this. 
because even the children that haven't been born yet, they but they ha have all been pointed at and and yeah. thought that person's coming to to life now or in a couple of years time, and it's I don't quite put that correctly, but I don't know. No, 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 and you and you want to know the purpose yeah. of creation. Mm. And I think that's important. I think the whole creation, I think God cannot not create. That's another Mullah Sadr mm -hmm. concept, even though it doesn't sound very Islamic, but because um, it's in the nature of God, God's nature to create. And I think that's very exciting. But therefore, all of creation does have a purpose, and it's to develop as a counterpoint to God as a child has a purpose to the father or mother of that child so how does all this make you feel this coronavirus thing to be honest frightened i think i think basically there's an underlying fear because you think Ugh! because you're made to think it's something to be fearful of but uh, but then as as you say is it is that actual point you said like the god said on the seventh day he rested and perhaps this is God's resting and saying now look what you've done to the planet you've you poisoned this planet which I've said before and and it's a very precious planet you poisoned it and what do we do about this poisoning planet and and I, mm. I don't know what we do about it we just take a step and thinking ah well, I mean, yes, it's given us a breathing space yeah. to think about. Mm. But you're, I mean, and how does it make me feel? Um, I'm worried for older friends, mm. uh, some particular older friends that are extremely vulnerable. I'm worried about some of my friends in America who are taking far less precautions. Mm. There's this sort of sense of American invincibility uh, in some of my dearest friends, uh, my most precious friends, uh, I'm thinking of one in particular, I mean, oh, I'll still go shopping, never mind, you know. It, it, gosh, America is going to be hit so hard, so hard, so terribly hard, because it's uh, the, the Americans have this concept of freedom and invincibility. Trump, for all his sins, he was suggesting they lock down the tri-state area and uh, their reaction from the governor of New York was he was horrified. He should have said, oh, good for you, Mr. President, lock us down. His lack of thoughtfulness, his lack of care, astonishing, because it, it goes beyond his pride as governor of New York. It, it, you know, the, 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 the people are dying. And yes, you do need to take measures like that. America is far too complacent, far, 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 far too complacent. And the pain and the suffering that is coming their way, unless they wake up their ideas, I think. But uh, uh, what about, how does it make me feel angry? There you go, that's how it makes me feel. I mean, we're in a war here. Mm. And uh, what makes me feel really angry is all these plastics that are in the ocean and I really that really gets me so angry and I'm maiming all these wonderful dolphins and things they've got bits of plastic stuck in them these wonderful guys who are actually diving to see what the uh, what yeah. casualties there are and I can't you can't believe how much plastics that are in the ocean what? and I said this years ago before anybody started talking about it before David Attenborough actually mentioned it you we really use plastics in the in the most heinous heinous way, and I just feel we getting our own desserts. Well, I think it's a wake up call from Mother Earth. Mm. I mean that that I mean, the other thing, of course, and I'm looking at some questions sent us from Hind Bensari, our dear friend and ex intern, and she was asking. How does COVID-19 affect, change or strengthen your vision of yourself, your government and the rest of the world? Does it change your vision, Veronica, of yourself, your government or the rest of the world? I just think uh, the government, I just feel, weren't doing enough. They actually started to do something, you know, way, way after this all started. And, and it, it just... The, the have haves haves are uh, uh, ordering everybody else to do the have nots 
haven't got anything. They're, they're losing their jobs. They're losing this and that. Yeah. And I really feel for the little little man or little lady who's trying to do something as losing her job and that sort of thing. That really makes me angry. Yes, I think the our government here in Britain has been slow, was very slow to act in the beginning. And then it introduced measures that were great but not fair. So, for instance, it's supporting people in employment. It's supporting businesses. But it, it really should have done a fairer thing. I mean, it should have offered support to all, uh, whether they are in employment or not in employment. And equally, I think, if you're going to use the nation's resources on this scale, then you should be helping rich and poor alike. So not just people with jobs, but people without jobs should get the same help and support that be given to people with jobs. And not up to £2,000 a month or something. Everybody should get the same amount of subsidy. It just is ugly, 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 the way the British government is. I mean, fair play as the Welsh used to say, Quarag Teg Pob Amsa, fair play all the time. This is not fair play. This is better help for those who are better off under this COVID virus crisis. So I'm not at all pleased with the way the British government are handling things. An American government, I think, is utterly complacent. It's failure, I've mentioned. Uh, the rest of the world, I don't know. I don't know enough about it. I know in uh, the UAE, they've been very serious because my, our son, mm. our eldest son is in the Emirates and they've locked the country down completely. And they, they, I mean, nobody's allowed in or out. Uh, our, our son's uh, mother and father-in-law, our co-grandparents, if you like, they they're in the Emirates. They can't leave. They can't leave to come home to Britain because they're it's locked down mm. there. I mean, serious lockdown, much more serious than here in Britain. But Britain is is more serious than many countries now. Uh, more serious, for example, than Germany. Germany, you're still allowed to go out and meet people, or at least meet meet one other person. In Britain, that's being discouraged now. It, 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 it's not against the law, but it's being discouraged they were much more cautious now than many countries i think so as we should be mm. if we could deal with this severely we can get rid of it much faster and you look at china china where this whole thing came from the chinese uh they're dealing with it much more effectively because they have a police state there you go it's a plague mm. that's what it is it's a plague yes. It's a plague of biblical proportions. Mm. It's a plague like they used to have in the Middle Ages. It's a plague. Mm. And I think we downplay it by calling it a virus. It is a plague. Mm. And uh, we need to think of it as such. Any last thoughts, Veronica? No, that's, yeah, that's, that's it, really. Um, you're, you're right, it's a plague. And we're desperately trying to get round it. But there, perhaps it'll teach us a lesson. Perhaps it will teach us a lesson that God's saying, hang on here, you're, you're polluting this one wonderful planet, which is very little tiddly planet, but in a huge milky way. I remember we, we actually had something, we, we went to stay at somewhere and they had a hot tub and I looked up at the hot tub and looked up at the stars. Looked from up at the stars, and it unbelievable—you could actually see the Milky Way, and and it was a lovely hot tub. Which Loveday said, "Look, come on, because yeah, Loveday's our daughter." Yes. Yeah. And said, "Join in here," and it was the most amazing sight. It was, it was a hot tub in the garden, yes. just to say. You yes. Make it all. <laughs> yes, it was extraordinary. Yeah. And it was the middle of the winter, and you yes. were snuggled up in the hot water, looking at the stars, and it was beautiful. Amazing. Remind you of what a beautiful universe this is. It is, and, and uh, really just feel special. Thank God for it. Okay, that's it from us. We are going to go. Well, we haven't got a hot tub, but we're going to <laughs> go and snuggle in front of our fire. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.